alternative reality games that got out of hand, to frauds and online cults. These are the mysteries that have captured the imagination of the internet, the crimes that took place on it, the legends it created, the subcultures and communities it gave rise to. And this is it came from the internet. Welcome to the podcast for people who take the internet too seriously. No, that's a... <laughs> we survived the internet, so you don't have to. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the show. I guess we don't actually need to do too much of an introduction this week because nobody in their right mind would be listening to this episode without already having listened to part one, right? Yeah, I would be very surprised if they did that. Yeah. If you have stumbled upon this by accident, uh, well, first of all, I'm Johnny and the other voice is Shane. Hello, Shane. Hello, Johnny. But yeah, there is a part one that is a uh, much more of a deep dive and this is more of a wrap up where we kind of get to the bottom of it but yeah don't just listen to this episode go back and listen to part one uh if you are returning to the show having listened to part one you obviously like it so far so i would ask you to uh show that by uh hitting the subscribe button and uh, rating and reviewing us on a podcast or the podcast app of your choice or all of them. If you have multiple podcast apps that have rating and review sections, go in and rate and review on all of them, uh, specifically Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Audible and what is the other one? Podcast Addict. They're all very, very important. Because like I said before, or did I say this last week that I'm giving this like six to eight episodes and if we're not, yeah. I'm not really sure what I'm want, <laughs> where I want to be after six or eight episodes, but <laughs> yeah. I'll know when I'll know when we get there. And if yeah. we're not there by okay. six or eight, I'll kill it. I'll kill it right there. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be your fault, the yeah. listener, not yeah. you, John. Be, like no, no, totally be the listener's fault. So if you want the show yeah. to continue, you got to make it continue. It <laughs> sounds so threatening. <laughs> <laughs> so since last week. Uh, was it last week we recorded? I can't even remember. But since last time, yeah. uh, have you been mulling over the story so far of Polybius? Um, <laughs> not that much. No, it's, no. Um, <laughs> no, it's a fascinating thing. Because I, I, I was thinking about it a lot today because we were recording today. And I was just kind of thinking, mm. like, was it ever real? Like, and I, I want to know so much more about, like, was it even was it even made by some game company? Did it ever actually exist? Was there like even if it was shred never, of? Yeah, like even if it was never in one random arcade, like is there somebody who actually like has a company taken responsibility? Said, oh yeah, we we made a game that was called this at the time, and it didn't do well in testing, and it was never actually in arcades. But we 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 had a focus group. We brought in thirty teenagers. Into, mm, into, mm. A, into a hotel conference room and got them to test it and none of them liked it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, is there anything or even like, that? like yeah. we did build the cabinet and the game was just never finished. And so the cabinet, yeah, yeah. Was, yes, there was a cabinet in some warehouse somewhere. Yeah. Uh, well, we will get to the bottom of it today. Like I have definitive, we'll have a definitive answer by the end of this. Uh, oh, where we wrapped up last, well, as far as what I think of as a definitive answer but i guess it'll be up to you and the listener to decide where we wrapped up last week we basically finished talking about stephen roach so just to remind you stephen roach was the man who claimed to have worked on the development of polybius not just worked on it but that he was one of the founders of sinus lesion the company that's meant to have created the game uh, working under they're contracted by um, a south american company and the other stephen roach I had told you about. Oh, yeah. The only other Stephen Roach where I, I could find anything about that also would have been in the Czech Republic. And he made the news around the same time for running a boarding school where him and his wife were uh, abusing the children there. Yes, and he was yes, referred yes. To, he was referred to in the press as a mentor of mind control. So my conclusion is that this they are both the same Stephen Roach. Yeah. And he put out this Polybius, his his involvement in Polybius as a story to try and like uh, change the search results for his name. So as if you put in Stephen, because if you do Google Stephen Roach and mind control now, you yeah. get Polybius results. You don't get anything about the Stephen Roach oh, running yeah. the, the boarding school and being a, a really, really, really bad person. So that is what I, I figure. That's a tactic a lot of like celebrities and PR agents yeah. do. So he, uh, like he's a, he's latched onto the Polybius story, not that that's the origin of the Polybius story. No, no. 
no, not that it's the origin, but um, and I think that's why as well. He, he in his version of the story, he kind of like puts to bed a lot of the um more like government conspiracy kind of stuff. And yeah. I figure he wants to make it sound more realistic to make his story kind of a big part of the canon, so as it's everywhere on the internet to just help hide the other Google results. Yeah. I am. Um, I would say I'm 99% sure that's what's going on with the Stephen Roach character. Yeah. Um, I just think that's very interesting. And it's like ads and he, well, he's, uh, whether the game is real or not, he's not, he has not actually not got to do it, but it just adds such a, a like it adds a, a, a sinister tone to the story. And it's one that yeah. is definitely real. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the, there, there is a Stephen Roach, and he's a bad person, and yeah, <laughs> it's. it's um, oh yeah, the, I was going to say that as you were saying, a lot of celebrities kind of, and there's so many stories over the years where you hear something, and then the next day there's a different story about some, that person, and that's yeah, to be taken yeah. up all the search results. And I, I, one I always remember, and I think I, I even talked about this when we done like the 1984 episode of Disaster Artists. Um, Elijah Wood, I was just going to say the same. Story. Came out and said something in an inter- interview once about how rampant like pedophilia was within Hollywood, and he hadn't like really been in the news in like months or weeks or whatever. And then like that same or the next day, every fucking like big media <laughs> media outlet like. We had a news story about like an image of Daniel Radcliffe that morphs into Elijah Wood and shows how yeah with the and slider. they were calling it a, a meme that went viral. But if you actually looked where it was posted on Reddit that same day and had like no, it originated on a Reddit post that had like very little engagement, so it wasn't viral until the media start like until it was reported on. They made it viral. It might have been Daniel or uh, Elijah Wood's own people. His PR might have been like, you shouldn't have said that. We need to oh, get, you. get yeah. you out, get something else about you into the news. So they just made a, a yeah. viral meme. Yeah. yeah. And I think even the Reddit post that originated, I could be wrong about this, but I think it was like the first, that user's first time posting on Reddit. Like imagine your first Reddit post doesn't even get much engagement, but it goes viral. Like it's, yeah. And it's, um, it's kind of one of those, it's, it's a very clever tactic because if you think of like your average Google search results, so if someone puts in, you know, Elijah Wood into Google and the first two pages or say there's 10 results per page, the first 15 results are, oh, how much he looks like Daniel Radcliffe and this thing. And then result 16 might be in the interview, he said this, but no, very few people are going to go down even to the second page of results, no, never mind no. the bottom of the first page. And so it's just... And that it dominates news feeds in social media as well and Twitter and stuff. So Yeah, isn't it something like ninety nine percent of clicks will be the first three results? Yes. And there's something like they call it the magic triangle. Like there's a particular if you draw it like a a slanted kind of triangle on Google, it's where the eye is drawn to. So like people will even engineer results to get to to get the most like eye catching words within that magic triangle, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like an, a, another example is Conor McGregor is like a pro at it when like he has done something bad, like you know assaulting somebody in a pub or something worse, he, and it's about to come out in the media. He'll go on Twitter and announce he's retiring because <laughs> that just become he's retired like three times. Yeah, it's so funny. Like if you <laughs> like if you ever hear of Conor McGregor retiring, it means some. It means you should dig further to see why he actually done. Yeah, and he's and he's bought a bunch of pubs, and then promotes the shit out of the pubs he's bought. So if you search Conor McGregor pub because you hear he punched somebody out in a mm. pub, like again, the first couple of results are talking about his pub and. Oh, stuff. I wasn't <laughs> even thinking of that. That's <laughs> that's 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 funny. Right. Well, um, I guess the the best way to sort of answer. Uh, whether Polybius was actually real or not is to go through its history online, like a, a timeline. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Because so far we've absolutely no evidence that the story of Polybius is true. So let's say it's not. At least we can we could try and determine like is the legend as old as when the game is meant to be in the arcade? If you know what I mean. Oh yeah. When when did the story start? Was it nineteen eighty nine or was it two thousand and four? 
Exactly, because if it's only if if the first mention of it was two thousand and four, let's say it was two thousand and four, you'd be like, oh, okay, well, it's obviously not real because it would have had it have made its way onto the internet before that. Whereas if it went back to like ninety five, you'd be like, that's still, you know, fifteen years from when the game was meant to be in arcades, but that's still very early in the internet, so it would it would help. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm not going to go into the entire timeline because there's way too much of it. But if anyone that's really interested, there's a YouTuber called Ahoy um, who makes like fantastic content, mostly video game centered documentaries. Yeah. And he does like a, an hour long one on Polybius that um, I've referenced before. Uh, but he, he goes into the timeline, like really breaks it down. And yeah, it's, oh. he just makes brilliant content and it's a good documentary. But I'd suggest watching that if anybody's really curious. You have me curious now. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, he has some great content. Like uh, you probably wouldn't watch the Polybius one because you'll have heard all the information by now. Yeah. But he has a really good one on like the the first ever video game and stuff. Like trying to find out what exactly is the first ever video game because it's not what a lot of people think. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I'd recommend his channel. But, uh, so Wikipedia, uh, it's the starting point for every rabbit hole on the internet. So as we'll start there. Polybius entry was created on the 27th of October, 2005, which is exactly that is the year you used as <laughs> right. off the top of your head. You just said 2005. So that does seem late. Before, yeah. Oh, did you? Sorry. Yeah. Now that seems late, uh, I guess, if it was really late for it to get a Wikipedia Wikipedia page, maybe. But then, I don't know. I don't know if I'd even use Wikipedia. Knew what it was by, uh, t- in 2005. Yeah. So maybe not. Uh, it, now, that was when its entry was created, but it was mentioned prior. It was mentioned in 2004. Uh, the Greek historian's entry was edited to mention the arcade game in the see other category. So 2004 really was when it got onto Wikipedia. But then Game Pro magazine, issue 180, so there's an actual physical magazine, uh, they yeah. covered it in September 2003. So, ah. uh, well, and this was going to ask you that. Had any mag, like, I was going to ask you that, had any magazines mentioned it before the internet? There is something, yeah, like where you're like, oh, it was in a magazine. Oh, now it sounds a bit more believable because <laughs> yeah. like who trusts what they read on the Internet? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole point of this podcast. But oh, it was printed in an actual public, like somebody who studied journalism wrote this. Yeah. So, At a time where people had to properly report their sources. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although let's, it, it's funny you say that. We'll get to its source. But yeah, uh, September 2003, this was, uh, they had a section called Secrets and Lies, uh, where they took a look at famous gaming myths and assigned each of them a verdict, uh, either true, false Uh. or inconclusive. So Polybius, I think there was seven uh, in this article, and Polybius was listed as inconclusive. Uh, So it's interesting. Yeah, it's a very small mention. It's just like one page, this article, and there's seven games, so just little bits on each one. But, you know, it's still, like I said, it's a it's a real magazine, and it's like at a time when like gaming magazines were huge. Like this had yeah. something like three million subscribers, like actual monthly subscribers. Yeah. So not just the people who just every now and again pick it up off the shelf, but that's people that get sent to them. Wow, yeah. It's like it, back at the time where that's where you got your cheat codes that's where you got reviews that's yeah, where you got yeah. like how you get through levels and stuff like that because people didn't get that stuff off the internet <laughs> I loved uh, gaming magazines I just would yeah. re- read this I'd buy one and just like read it like 10 times wow. <laughs> even for like I'd buy one on like a console I didn't even own just like if yeah. I was bored just really liked them I think I've, I've spent more time reading gaming magazines than playing games like <laughs> <laughs> But on on a on a side note, uh, one of the myths that's also listed in this article and listed as inconclusive was: Can you launch a missile with a PS2? And beside <laughs> it is a picture of Saddam Hussein. But it was listed as inconclusive. So they looked into a, the myth. They looked into whether you can launch a missile with a PlayStation Two, and were like, "Yeah, we're not actually sure." <laughs> that's fascinating like we I, we gotta look into that and do an episode on it definitely that is uh, I don't know if that's a myth that came from the internet but I think it's we can still do it on the podcast I read about it on the internet but it was, it was going around at the time yeah yeah, that's brilliant so yeah that's 2003 the same year on good 
gooddealgames.com. There was another really in-depth article uh, posted on February 15, 2003, and that contains a lot of information that would become canon. Uh, so actually, this is where the screenshot of the title screen first uh, ah, okay. popped up, as far as I know. And there's a special thanks on the article to uh, coinop.org, which is, I've referenced loads last time, because that's, yeah. you know, as far as I, I c- could tell, that may, might be where it started. That's where a lot of the information comes from, too. Like, between yeah. coinop and then this article on Good Deal Games, seems to be a lot, of the, a lot of the canon was created there. And then, of course, the fact that Good Deal Games thanks coinop.org, that... Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of sounds like they were both like working together, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Did I... I explained what kind of org was last week, did I? I can't remember. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, okay, so it's... um, Kynop.org is... I think last time I might have described it as the IMDB of arcade games. Yes, yes. Uh, so it, it's a resource for, like, collectors and enthusiasts of arcade machines, specifically, I think. I don't think it's consoles or anything. Yeah. And yeah, it's a it's a, com- a common factor in all the earliest stories relating to Polybius. Now it, it's interesting. So its entry here existed before every other article I could find, right? Yeah. And so almost all legends, or almost all parts of the legends, originate here. So even the screenshot I think might have appeared on Good Good Deal Games first, but I think it might have been sent to them from somebody from coinop.org i'm not i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure there um because i went in if you go into the like a uh, way back machine there's no screenshots of all then of what the page looked like in the early days oh, so I, get you. Yeah. I think the screenshot was added later but i can't be sure on that yeah and at the bottom of this page there's a creation date of uh the 8th of the 3rd 1998 at Whoa. 12 a.m which is fairly early yeah, yeah. That's so far back. Yeah. Created in 1998, and then it's not until 2003 when the article first appears on Good Deal Games, and then later that same year, Game Pro Magazine, and then two years later, Wikipedia. So, like, there's a, a huge gap of time of it just being on coinop.org, like five years pretty much yeah, before yeah. it's reported anywhere else. Um, that is a very long time. Yeah. This, however, does not appear to be true. So the, the YouTuber I mentioned, the Hoy, done a look into this, and it would appear that the entry was actually created in 2000, in February 2000 specifically. Oh. So now, only not... two years of difference, but that is kind of, two years is a lot, especially in terms of like the sort of growth of the internet, the difference, like I didn't know what the internet was in 1998, but I had, no. it. <laughs> but I had it in 2000. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know what it was, but I don't think I'd yeah. ever been on the internet in 1998. Like. I'm trying to think, 1998 is probably the first time I logged into the internet, and it was like in school, and I remember sitting going, I'm on the internet, whoa, because <laughs> we'd like heard of this thing called the internet. Yeah. Can you remember <laughs> the first website you went to? Boobs.com. <laughs> Our school website. <laughs> oh, really? I think like, I'm trying to think... I think it might have been like WWF.com. What's really funny is we were all told to go to the school website and a couple of lads went to WWF.com and they got in trouble <laughs> with the computer teacher. <laughs> I remember it so vividly <laughs> because WWF.com had like just photos of uh, whatever the guys had gone to like the site that was like all the women in bikinis. The, <laughs> the, 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 daily, the daily Diva. Yeah. I remember that. Oh, yeah. The Daily Diva. <laughs> and that was, I'm probably not, I, I'm trying to think, did I start secondary school in 98 or 97? But it was whatever, maybe it was, say, September 97 and then into 98. I'm trying to remember. But yeah, Actually, now that I think of it, yeah, no, I would have been, because I remember being on the internet, actually, in primary school. The, jan- <laughs> the janitor in our primary school, <laughs> who also, this, I, I don't know if I should tell this story. <laughs> <laughs> well there's not really much of a story but like the janitor there was a guy he he really worked as a janitor for like a few months he was a young enough guy I know him I still know who he is he he was probably only like 20 at the time but uh-huh. like he, sh- he showed us how to download porn on it oh my god 
but like 90s porn, like Playboy, just nudes. Oh, okay. But because it was it'd just be images, it'd take you forever. Or maybe not. He didn't show, he just told us which computer. There was a computer for it were already downloaded, and he just told us. What, but obviously, it was him that downloaded it. Oh, yeah. and he just told us which computer the like Playboy shoots were on or something. But that's that's bizarre. Like, imagine a twenty year old just telling like twelve year olds, yeah, where, where the porn is. <laughs> Have to do an episode on that. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> Take a spin now. You're in with the techno set. You're going surfing on the internet. But so, I guess that counts. I was on the internet kind of in primary school, so, <coughs> or at least knew what it was. But anyway, I think the point mainly was 1998 to 2000 is kind of a, a good a good chunk of time. Yeah, yeah for internet. And yeah, because, because like literally the difference between, say, for me, between 98 and 2000 is by 2000, we had a family computer that was on the internet in our house. Where in 1998, we didn't, like it was this... Yeah, magical yeah. thing. You know what I mean? Like the, that difference of two years. That and that was probably most homes. Yeah, and like I can, I can remember. Well, as yeah, because I can remember having Windows ninety eight, but like that would just have been. Out, we'd probably bought a second hand computer or whatever. Yeah, but I think uh, the Y two the Y two K bug and all that made people very aware of the internet. A lot more people were aware of it after two thousand, and we're getting on. Yes, yeah, yeah. On, we're getting online. But it's uh, but the most interesting thing about that about this all is that if the page was cr- actually created in 1998 why does it say 2000 or if it was actually created in t- 2000 why does it say 1998 on the website yeah because the interesting thing about that is so the, the date it's meant to be created on according to the website is around the time Stephen Roach was in the news ah Wow. Which might be another reason why he chose Polybius, because the date you search Stephen Roach 1998, mind control. What it seems is actually going on here, though, is the website changed hosts uh, around 2000. Morning. Yeah. And so they renamed uh, or changed hosts and maybe renamed like all their subdomains. But basically everything that was already on the website was just given a default creation date, which is probably when... The website itself was created. Oh yeah, yeah. So if you go into Donkey Kong and Mario now, they were created. Their entries were created at the exact same time and date as Polybius. Oh, okay. So it could have actually been ninety eight then. And it was just re- uh, no, it could, no. It's, it, it was two thousand, but it was just everything is given the default of nineteen ninety eight when they changed host. It's just kind oh, of a mistake sorry. on the I website. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's the other way around. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Any any entry of a game that was that just wasn't in the website, wasn't listed on the website prior to them changing host, has a new creation date. But everything prior to it is just they all have the exact same date. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So this guy Ahoy, the YouTuber, he done the deep the deep dive and figured out it was actually two thousand anyway. Yeah. Um, but uh, where where I'm so nothing predates two thousand really. Well, there is a bit. But yeah. it, it, sticking with the coinup.org, the yeah. the guy who, um, the creator and current owner of that website, the one who made the entry, insists that the date that it was actually created in, in 1998. It's just important to say that. Uh, it yeah. doesn't, really doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. Um, but he insists it is. Uh, but his, his name keeps popping up in the story, so I, I, he, he might have something got to do with it. Yeah. And his name is Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there's no, uh, there is no other mention, no other magazine article, news source or anything of note that can be found online anyway that mentions a video game called Polybius. Uh, so Interesting. a long way from 1981, uh, the 6th yeah. of February 2000 seems like the actual day the MIT was created, I guess, or made its way onto the internet. Yeah. There is... Uh, some other mentions around the same time. So have you ever heard of Usenet? No. Uh, I hadn't until it came up looking into this, but it's like a sort of an, an early, um, not like a message board, but like a, well, yeah, let's call it a message board. It's 
because I'm not tech savvy enough to really describe it. Um, if you Wikipedia, it it's described as an early non centralized computer network for discussion of particular topics and the sharing of the sharing of files via news groups. So I think it's just a message board, but yeah, uh, I think you had to like download a software for it. Oh, okay, but Google acquired them. And so they have an uh, active archive of basically every Usenet post. Yeah. So like this is the the only place like stuff were really discussed, or the, the this is like the biggest like discussion group on the internet prior to two thousand. And yeah. if you search Polybius on it, you do you find hundreds of maybe not even hundreds, but you find a lot of results. But of course, they're all referring to the Greek historian. Oh yeah. But then in April two thousand. A German user named Cyber Yogi brought up the topic and just around the time, I think it was like maybe two months after the CoinOp entry. Yeah. Maybe he just came across it through CoinOp. But what's interesting about him, so uh, <laughs> this is kind of a big blow to the credibility. Okay. <laughs> Cyber Yogi had uh, made, um, he was popular on Use, Usenet and when he brought up Polybius, this is in 2000 when he brought up, nobody really trusted him because yeah. uh, only like a year prior, he had a post where he claimed to have discovered a lost ROM of a game called uh, Phoenix. Okay. <laughs> and so consensus among many now is that cyber, this cyber yogi guy might be the originator of the myth because like he literally, oh, he, he tried it once before. <laughs> he literally a year prior done the same thing about this other fabled game. There's a game, and this is another game in myth of a, a game called Phoenix, but it's not, there's no like creepy background. It's not like Polybius oh, yeah, or anything. Yeah. It's just a it's fake not a game. It's juicy a story. Like it's... No, no. But he claimed to have found a ROM at one point. <laughs> okay. So like, yeah, like this, uh, the guy I keep mentioning, oh, he, like he searched through 200 gigabytes of scanned gaming magazines as well. And oh found nothing. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy the yeah. work he done. Um, he found uh, nothing other than well, not, he found a lot of entries, but all after the Game Pro magazine entry in two thousand and three. Oh yeah. So his conclusion was as well like that it originated in two thousand, but he actually didn't think Cyber Yogi was responsible because he and he has a good point. This Cyber Yogi guy is German, uh, so yeah. why would he butcher the German word? Synesthesia that is meant to mean like mind deletion, but it's not a real German word. Uh, okay. A native German speaker wouldn't butcher that word, you know? Yeah. Okay. That'd be like if, if you and I met up to meet the, the, the MIT as English speakers and called the company like mind a lot, meaning mind delete, you know, <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it wouldn't, it would be a nonsensical word for him if he messed it up. Yeah. But I just find that mad. So, because it seems like you're like, okay, so it comes up on kindup.org in February 2000, and then three months later, the only, it, it gets no attention, no mention, nobody, the site isn't even popular. And then somebody mentions it on this message board, and the same guy spread a, a, a myth about another game only a year prior. You would think, of course, it's this guy, definitely. Yeah, yeah, of course. But clearly isn't. <laughs> like, there's no way he would make up the story and, like, fuck up the name as a native German speaker. That's really funny. That's mad. Unless it's deliberate. I don't know. That's a good way to, uh, yeah. Because it's like literally the one German word in the, <laughs> you know, in the story kind of thing. So it's a good way to throw suspicion off yourself. Um, yeah. But that's, that's seriously deep thinking though, to like, to plant a story and then, and make it like, like to plant a story like that. To yeah. throw in a spelling mistake that throws off your suspicion on your native language and then do nothing about it for three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it, just, like, it seems, uh, yeah, that doesn't really add up to me. Yeah. So you think this, you think uh, Cyber Yogi is innocent? Um, yeah. From the information I have there, yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's it. That's pretty much all the information I have. He, he, he's very, was very vocal that he had, he just came across it and posted about it that he never met it up. And yeah, no, I, I think he's innocent. Uh, also, I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I think with his original um, 
What's the word I'm looking for? Prank, I guess. It yeah. was him that then revealed that he was just trolling people. Oh, well, then, yeah. That's so fair. I think, like, if he got to this point, like, the Polybius myth has, like, is now mentioned in fucking episodes of a Disney Plus show and stuff like that, he'd yeah. have owned up to it by now. No, I think the kind up entry is what I, I go with. I'm going to say the case is, I would say it's pretty much closed and it was the admin of kindup.org who's named Kurt Collar that orig- originated the myth. Yeah. Probably as a very clever way to advertise his site because yeah. it is the main source of all these um, other articles, including like Game Pro magazine. Like, yeah, like I yeah. said... 3 million subscribers getting your website mentioned in a magazine back then was how you got your website noticed. Like, yeah, because you couldn't Google stuff. You had to know the URL of a website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember doing that? Like, you, like that, you'd have a magazine or something. And you'd be like, oh yeah, what was that website? And you were like copying it from the website or from mm. the magazine. Yeah, yeah. The, oh. You had to remember URLs. That was the... <laughs> yeah, oh, that was crazy. I can't, geez, now I'm trying to think, I'm just going on tangents, but I'm trying to think, like, when was the first time I came across, like, a search engine, like Google? Yeah. <laughs> I can't even remember. No. I can just remember typing in websites originally. Yeah. But uh, also, so uh, I can't, don't have a date for this, but there was some point in the, like, closer to maybe 2008, 2009, where um, there was a... a notice on coinop.org that they were working on a German version of the website. Uh-huh. So very few admit, it seems like this Kurt Collar guy is the main, like the one consistent guy behind this website. Uh, so it seems yeah. like he has been, at the time at least, was uh, learning German. Ah. Uh, so so yeah. who is more likely to put to the butcher a German word, the native German speaker or the guy running the website where it was first posted who just happens to be learning German <laughs> at the time and thought it was an interesting word and he got it wrong or it's spelling it wrong. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. So also the Game Pro magazine, Dan Amrick or Amrich was the author of that and he, according to him, it was this caller guy who tipped him off to Polybius. At the time, yeah. he didn't know he owned coinop.org. Ah, uh, so he was a very clever marketing ploy for his website. Um, Have I completely? Um, is that really a really anticlimactic end to this story? <laughs> yeah, I kind of hoped uh, there'd be some mention of it in a magazine in the eighties or something of you know of upcoming games or something that it just be meant like a list of like. 20 games we're hoping to see next year and literally just in the list is just the word Polybius, you know, like number 17 or something like that. You know, I just thought there'd be something like that. Yeah, but instead it just came from the internet. (laughs) Literally, it came from the internet. Everything about it came from the internet. Well, kind of. We can get into that a bit. But, um, like, yeah, it it, it, Polybius as far as, like, the story of a game called Polybius that was in one or two arcades in Portland, Oregon in 1981, is untrue, and it was made up on February, whatever, in February 2000, yeah, uh, by a guy running a website that he wanted to promote. But yeah, it came from the internet. That's If we're using that title, that's why it's a good title. Well, yeah, so like the main parts of the Polybius story, the, um, the name Polybius, the mind control aspect and all that, Oh, originates yeah, in with the, Oregon or in Portland. The, yeah, that all originates with um, the coin up entry, specifically, like, I guess, the Portland, Oregon part. But there is, I guess, like, to, to leave the story a little bit open, you do have to remember that, like, so this guy, Kurt Collar or Collar, whoever you, K O L L E R is his surname. But anyway, like so he, he Kohler, makes up the yeah. he makes up the the myth, posts it on his website, and maybe like tips off some of the press to get the article about it, and they use his entry as a source. But all the other stuff come from other people. All the like eyewitness accounts afterwards of people claiming that 
to play it at like, you know, Reddit discussions yeah. and 4chan discussions or whatever. What do you think of them? Like, are they just having fun? Are they just like, they like the myth, so they're like helping spread it the same as like a, a Slender Man, say? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's kind of, um, but it's almost like it's a, it's a Chinese whispers kind of thing, isn't it? It's, it's you're kind of going, you know, like, oh, did you hear about this thing? And someone goes, yeah, my cousin was there because they want to be part of the story. Yeah. You know, and it's, and I think that's where that kind of comes from. And uh, like, it's, isn't that kind of how Flat Earth became popular? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but I think there's enough like real life stuff within this that um, could explain, like, I, I don't think the, I don't think the majority of people originally anyway were like, like flat earth type people just trying to like propagate a myth because they thought it was fun or whatever. I think there might have been yeah. some genuine just confusion and people might have just misremembered things and thought maybe they'd yes. seen it or heard of it. Because like it was the 80s and like the, the, the games like this were in abundance, like short lived yeah. games by little developers that were only in, I doubt like as far as, as far as I know, I don't think there'd have been in only two arcades, but they might un- they might have been made by a local developer and only been in arcades in that region, like that town or that state. Yeah, or there might have been that they only had, say, five cabinets and they basically brought the cabinets on tour, like to different arcades and stuff, and for a couple of weeks. And people just were like, oh yeah, I remember playing that. I, th- what, I can't remember what that game was. Was that well, I'd say with, with these you type know? of g- games that would be made like that, it'd be, it'd be more they'd be just in generic cabinets and if the game wasn't doing well, it'd just be taken out and a new game would be put into that cabinet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, like you, you remember like the Commodore 64, for example, like everybody, like, anybody yeah. with a Commodore 64 could create a game on it if they knew how to code. Like I, I think that's oh, a, yeah. e- Elon Musk's first sort of tech thing he done was he made a game that won some award when he was like 15 on <laughs> Commodore 64. Yeah, like yeah. I, I remember getting the Commodore, my older brother had a Commodore 64 and he used to get the magazine for it like every week or month or whatever. Yeah. And you wouldn't get like a demo, like you remember PlayStation, you'd get a demo every week. Yeah. In this one, you would just get an actual full game because there was thousands of games being made for it because there'd be kids making them in the room and they'd send them in and Commodore would be like yeah this is good we'll buy it oh yeah <laughs> that's mad. we'll buy the rights for like 200 bucks or something yeah yeah and then they would just give it out give it away free like, yeah that's mad I'm not sure like I don't think arcade games were as easy <laughs> to make as that but there was a bunch of like the graphics back then were so basic like there was yeah. a bunch of like knockoffs. There, there was a bunch of knockoffs of like Pac-Man, just the same game with just a different sprite. Yeah, and you'd find them in random arcades and stuff. It, it would have been so easy for people to have played a game that was like a knockoff of Tempest, which is what Polybius is described as being like. Like, there oh yeah, could have easily then, been a knockoff version of that that people played, and just, they didn't remember the name. Yeah. And, yeah. And then when they read this, they're like, oh, that's what that was. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, yeah. And then there, there's other stuff that like happened in real life that you could mistake for being part of the Polybius legend too. So an example would be FBI busts in arcades, which oh, yeah. sounds insane, but many an arcade were raided or was raided in the 80s by the FBI for uh, money laundering and being hubs of drug dealing. And specifically, a very big one was illegal gambling. Oh, okay. So... That they were like fronts for stuff? Not even fronts, but just actual, like, the machines being used for gambling. There was tournaments and stuff that were pretty much illegal gambling. Oh, okay. That's mad. (laughs) Yeah. Now, there was, like, there were major hubs for drug dealing. Not like the arcades being fronts, but literally... Like you've seen, you've seen the Turtles movie. I think Turtles too. Yeah. Don't they, don't they recruit? Because all the kids are in the arcade, so that's where they go to oh, recruit yeah, them the for foot, their gang. The foot, foot Clan. Uh, yeah, yeah. In the arcade. <laughs> I remember that in, in a lot of eighties movies. Like I think Police Academy as well. Like one of the gang operates yeah. in an arcade. Like it was a big thing in the eighties. Yeah, the guy with the crazy voice. Well, like um, pool halls in England yeah. in the seventies and eighties were notorious for like 
being violent, like fights breaking out and all this and gang activity. Yeah. But yeah, arcade arcades were the same. But so the men in black, so that was a bit a big part of Polybius' story is the men in black coming to collect data from the machine, right? Oh yeah. So there's a lot of evidence to to suggest that part of the story is absolutely 100% true. That, yes, the FBI had come, especially in Portland, Oregon, people like actual arcade owners have attested to this, the FBI had installed screen recording devices in the back of machines. Wow. To record high scores. Because, so not as a recruitment tool or anything like that, or yeah. an MK Ultra experiment, but it was to track who was taking part in illegal gambling. Ah, uh, that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and so incredibly boring, really. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> the actual thing. Or another, like that, so that did happen, so that could be a, a Men in Black, but also uh, video game companies were known yeah. to send employees in undercover to check if arcades were using counterfeit systems. So I found oh, one Reddit yeah. post of a man who actually claimed he did exactly that in Portland in the 80s. Uh, so if true, that that guy would probably be a man, the man in black people saw. Yeah. He worked for Atari or something and literally would go in undercover and inspect machines. Like, so he'd be like fucking around at the back of these machines to see if they were legit. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of, it's almost like there's, there's a truth which is FBI raids and counterfeit games and things like that that created these stories and then mm. someone thought okay this is in the zeitgeist so let me put it all together into a legend or a story yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. which someone who's writing their own gaming website specifically to hear arcade games would know those stories exactly <laughs> exactly um, because that's and that's why the, the best stories they have some semblance of truth in them and that's why they spread and work because they have something in the zeitgeist. It's it's almost like the Mandela effect. You know what I mean? It's that idea like that there's there's something there in the back of people's brains that they go, Oh yeah, I remember hearing that or I remember seeing that and and then it, it becomes more true. Like, you know, that's uh Yeah. It's it's why the best sci fi is the stuff that isn't actually that different from the world we live in. It's when you see a sci fi movie that like just has all these ridiculous over the top inventions that we would never actually use. The films never work. (laughs) Yeah. It's when it's something like, say, Black Mirror, for example, where it's just like a more advanced version of three D or like it's a, or like what what if what if Snapchat but real life, you know, that kind of thing with Black Mirror. <laughs> or they've uh, yeah, they've this the social social credits episode is is a good example of that. Um yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's why I was tr- trying to think of um yeah, yeah. Well if Instagram but real life. Yeah. It's kind of that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it, like it's all about it's, it fits within believability, you know, because, yeah, people knew of these things happening. Take a spin, now you're in with the techno set, you're going surfing on the internet. And then there is the, the other aspects of the story, like, so the sickness and death. Uh, there, were, there were wide reports in local, locally, as in, in Portland, in 1981 of two players who fell ill on the same day uh, one collapsed with a migraine after playing Tempest again Tempest the game Polybius was meant to be very like yeah and another suffering from uh, stomach pain after playing Asteroids for uh, 28 hours in a film <laughs> in a filmed attempt to break a world record uh, he'd also <laughs> hadn't eaten and had only been drinking Mountain Dew yeah, so that's probably why. <laughs> I can stay awake playing a game for 28 hours. And the stress of, like, well, you get a point, like, you're putting your body under a lot of stress. <laughs> but they, um, yeah, so that that was in Portland in 1981 on the same day. So, like, of course that's what people are thinking of. It's almost like, it's almost too perfect, though, isn't it? Mm. It's, like, it's a really well thought out. Um, so your man, Kohler, was it? Um I'm not sure how to pronounce it. We'll just call him Kurt. Kurt. Kurt from Kine. Kine up. Is he from Portland? 
you know what? I n- it never occurred to me to check that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, one of the first things I thought of. <laughs> I don't know why that just never occurred to me. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I know he, he has a Wikipedia page, I think. Um, on an aside, actually, what is interesting, there is spelling errors in the Polybius kynop.org entry. And in all the, yeah. like, the 22 years it's been on the internet and it being, like, it changing hosts and new screenshots being added and stuff, he has never fixed the spelling errors. Yet on its Wikipedia entry, he has. That's interesting. There is a, a little question out there of on whether there is a bigger purpose to his entry. Like, is there some riddle or code that people are meant to solve? Uh, yeah. No, I can't find actually where he... I can find when he was born. No, that's a different guy. Yeah, I, I don't know where be really funny. It'd be really funny if like you took all the misspelled letters and then it just said, I made this up or something. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or you you have been fooled or something, you know. I assume he isn't oh. from Portland because I think that would make it way too obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. There was also a, another... Another, just st- sticking with the sickness and death, there was a death in an arcade in 1982, in like, close by, uh, when a player collapsed after a marathon of the game Berserk. And yeah. that actually, that game, I think that game got banned. That, that There was a media frenzy around that one. Um, it, it, it was due to a pre-existing heart condition that he didn't know he had. All right, so there's a little bit of satanic panic over. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> sure it was worsened crazy. by the stress of doing a marathon of the game. Yeah, but um, yeah, obviously not the game's fault. But again, in or around Portland, Oregon, only a year after the other two players collapsed. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, at the same time, Polybius was meant to be on the scene. So that is 100% what people are talking about. Um, yeah, so it's, it's just there in the zeitgeist. It's, you know, you knew a kid at camp who was at the arcade that day or whatever. Like, you're just, yeah. like that I was saying, your cousin went to that school or you know you just hear like and it just happened then that the next day an employee from atari was there checking to see if they're using counterfeit machines yeah or the feds were taking out the screen capture for the illegal gambling ring yeah like you put those two things together you would think oh something's going on with that game over there and the game just happened to be some knockoff of tempest and then yeah. years later you're like in your 40s and you're online and you hear about this game called Polybius. You're like, oh, I remember that. It was that. a Tempest ripoff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and like we, we talked last week, another thing that, that is true is the epilepsy. We we went into that a good bit. Yeah. Like we used the uh, Pokemon Shock from the, the Pokemon episode yeah. from 97 as an example like that. Um, that caused thousands of children to experience seizures. So, um yeah. Games certainly can Shredders. do it. And, sorry? Especially if they were like a rip off of a game or a knockoff of a game. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah, actually playing not. a different different visual frequency or like a yeah, different yeah. megahertz. Probably just really glitchy as well. I remember playing like really badly yeah. programmed games can be really glitchy and have flash like too much flashing lights. Yeah, like you get to an end of a level and it just starts flashing crazy at you. You'd uh, it could cause a seizure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do it. Uh, yeah, and and another thing to add to the to what's true about this story is like as we said last week, uh, the U.S. government has dabbled in using video games as a training tool. They still do, the, the more so now. Yeah, but we mentioned the Atari uh, War Simulator Battle Zone that they used a, a version oh, called yeah, the Bradley yeah. Trainer to uh, train their um, their recruits. But if they used if they used that game to train like it got Atari to rework that game for them and used it to train recruits why would they not like we already know we know for a fact that the feds were screen recording games in arcades yeah why wouldn't the US Army do the same because if they're using Battlezone to train tank operators wouldn't they be like well let's go and see how the players who are playing this game in arcades are doing because if they're getting higher scores than our guys they're probably better um, yeah, like wouldn't they use that to recruit people? I have no evidence of that, but no, but it kind of makes logical sense. I one hundred percent see that as being a possibility. 
Yeah. And which is one of the earliest like theories of Polybius is that that's what it was. Um, so yeah. I definitely see it as being plausible. But again, that would explain men in black suits coming and fiddling exactly, around the backs yeah. of games and things like that and being a bit suspicious and stuff. <laughs> and kids hanging around an arcade are going to talk shite and make stuff up as well. So <laughs> that, That's the only part we can't say is true um, but it's total speculation on my part. But everything else, um, like the, the the men in black, is true. They're just not getting data from some kind of experiment. They're just yeah spying on gamblers essentially, or their Atari <laughs> employees. Yeah, so it is. A, I guess it's kind of a anticlimactic because we know Polybius itself is fake. But I think there's enough um, enough of the parts surrounding the myth is actually real. Yeah. So it's kind of. Um, I don't know, it's kind of, we we have a boat ways. Yeah, like I I had kind of come away from the last episode, I'd come away with the idea that uh, there was probably a demo game that caused seizures or caused people to basically brain glitch because of the way it was displaying and stuff. So that was kind of where I was going with it. Um, and that would seem the mm. most likely thing rather than it being part of some conspiracy or government or army recruitment thing or whatever the fuck like. Um, so then to to me that sounds like pretty conclusive proof that it's not real, and I'm glad that that's that we've an answer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, yeah. if you'd gotten to the end of this episode and they gone, and then we don't know, <laughs> the, or, it, it's inconclusive. Uh, to me, that's pretty conclusive. That uh, yeah, no, I think um, it's conclusive. There's but. a bunch of stories that are most likely true or things that actually happened around that time. And then someone who knew those legends decided to kind of fit them all into one narrative as a story. And, and he he done a remarkable job, like hats off to him. Yeah. A lot of the people who kind of think that he's responsible for it are kind of very yeah. negative about him on the internet, like calling him like a, a con man and like all this. It's like... No, he created a fucking great story. Yeah. He used it to promote his website. Like, it was very smart. And he didn't, like, he didn't, no, nobody gets hurt in the story he made up or anything. Like, it's oh. just, it's just fun. I'd, I'd love to see, like, a mini series like that, like a HBO mini series. <laughs> it could be six episodes or it could be a two hour movie and just be like, do it in the style like Stranger Things, like do like War Games, the Matthew Broderick movie. Like you mm. know, you do do that way and just f- do the whole legend of yeah, it's, it's, it's it'd be cool. It, it does have a very Stranger Things vibe. Portland yeah. in the eighties just has that feel to it. Yeah, something else I was going to say there regarding that. Oh no, it's gone out my head. You were talking more about the guy Kurt. Yeah. Uh, People hate him. Oh yeah, I was just going to ask you: Do you think he will ever own up to it? Probably not because there's there's Just not a lot of, too far. Yeah, and then there's also not a lot of risk either. Like you know what I mean? It's is it really worth? But would you ever tell the story? I think, I feel like I would want to be credited at some point. If I met it up at some point, I'd like people to know. So it's like, oh, by the way, that was me. Yes, I made up a great story. Thank you. I'm brilliant. Kind of thing. <laughs> Though what I was thinking because like I remember when um. Slender Man got really popular and somebody was developing a movie on it. And yeah. at that point, the guy who created it was like, uh, hang on, no, I made that up. I own the copyright. Money, please. Oh, so yeah. I, I wonder, like, yeah, if you suddenly decided, like, if Disney were going to make, like, a, a series like Stranger Things on, on Disney Plus about Polybius, yeah. would suddenly he be like, uh, hang on a second. I, yeah, that's my on. IP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Money, please. That might be the best way to, like, coax him <laughs> into, into revealing that he made it yeah, up. Yeah. Is like yeah. a, what you do is you do another hoax is you you put out a hoax that this is being made, this project is being developed. J.J. Abrams is developing yeah, yeah, yeah. a Polybius and, movie. And then it gets picked up by movie magazines and so on and so forth. That's, so you, 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 you pull it back on them and then see what happens. That is a fantastic idea. Can we do that? <laughs> yes, let's write write a treatment. Let's get it out there. Okay, you see, so, so we could do that. So, so I know somebody who could help with that. You know somebody, you know somebody who, who runs... Uh, a geek sort of centred website. I do, yeah. See, we only need, and that's a small enough website, more Irish focus, but you only need one, as we've learned from this, this very story, yeah. you only need one source originally yeah. for the others to use. 
That's it. Because that's that's definitely how modern journalism works now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that you have you have like proper newspapers are quoting uh, like they're doing articles about something somebody said on Reddit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No. So like what we do is so next on our other podcast, I'll casually mention at the start at some point, oh, because like I've mentioned loads on that podcast, like having friends that work in film and I'll just mention, oh, yeah, Richie was telling me that J.J. Abrams was over in Ireland recently. They're scouting locations for like a film about some some like legend about a video game and pretend I don't really know what it's called <laughs> or that. And yeah. then, ho- then then a listener would reply saying, Oh, I've heard of this thing about Polybius or that. And then we can use that to like show your friend that and like, oh, did you hear anything about this? We mentioned it on our podcast and then maybe they'll write in our, or you can just get them to lie. I don't know how yeah, yeah. their journalistic integrity, if they'll just lie or if we'll need to trick them into thinking it's real too. But we yeah. just need to get on one website. We know That's Screen it. Rant, the people at, there's people at Screen Rant that listen to our other podcasts. So we could also oh, try yeah. to get to Screen Rant. Yeah, screen, yeah, and screen out would be big, better yeah, for some mm. of that. The weekly plan, uh, right into the weekly plan. I think this is good. I mean, this podcast is going to go out there so people listening to this podcast will know it's a hoax. But so you yeah. can help us. Like if any of you have any uh, insight or insides <laughs> to, to the industry to, to get this story planted in the press, uh, we'd like to hear it. Or just start writing about it on it. Just start, yeah, we'll Reddit. just start. We'll all like agree to go into like we'll get a bunch of us together on like our discord or something and like plan out to go into like some reddit group and just create a fake conversation about this (laughs) polybius movie that's in the works (laughs) also try and call out the guy (laughs) to to reveal himself (laughs) and then you create enough stir imagine you create a big stir about it and then suddenly there's actual like the industry is actually like oh what what is this polybius movie do we have any movie like warner brothers like oh disney is doing this we need to get a film like this in the works (laughs) (laughs) it just completely spins out of control you know they're making a movie and it's our exact plot that we've put out and so then we're looking for the ip (laughs) it's then us like trying to sue the kurt collar guy because we were the ones who actually kept we 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 didn't get our cut (laughs) Uh, i think that's a very funny idea and i genuinely think we should do something along those lines definitely i think that'd be so funny if this podcast achieves Nothing else other than like coax this man into revealing he made up Polybius. <laughs> but imagine it didn't work. Imagine he was yeah. just like, oh, yeah, that's like I said, it's true. Then yeah. I might actually turn around and be like, okay, maybe he didn't make it up. <laughs> Stephen Roach is like, oh, hang on. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, then he has to come back to, he, he comes back to America to like meet with Universal and the cops are waiting. The sting. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Then, then we get a, a guy arrested who deserves to be in prison. So either way, it's win-win. Yeah, yeah. I think right. we'll, we'll mull over what to do with that idea. I, I definitely think we do, should do something with it. But I think we, I think the case is closed on Polybius. Yeah, I, I say made up. That's what I'm voting on. That's, yeah, I think um, it, that definitely came from the internet in the age of the internet. Exactly. Yeah, it might have took uh, 40 years, but I think uh, the truth usually comes out in these kind of scenarios. Although, as the podcast goes, I'm sure we'll be getting loads of stories like these, like this, where we just, uh, at the end, we're just like, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think it, it probably more often than not, I think, yeah. those type of t- these type of but things go on. So good for a first topic that we have a conclusion, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, like we said at the top of the show, if you liked this, be sure to sub and be sure to rate and review us on all the podcast apps. And we haven't even set up any social media yet, but by the time this goes out, I guess I'll put a link tree in the description and all our social media will be there. And I've got no sign off yet. I'm still working on it. So until next time, don't believe everything you... What was I said last time? Don't believe everything you hear on the internet, but believe us or trust us. I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know, I'll come up with something better. Have a nice apocalypse. <laughs>